Everyone in the audiophile community always looks with a mixture of admiration and horror at the monstrous Scandinavian beasts that come out under the Griffon brand. We all know that it is always big, heavy, very beautiful and infinitely expensive. But a few years ago everything changed. The Danes made a budget amplifier. How budget? By Griffon standards. So here is the story of what the Junior Griffon amplifier is, in my subjective opinion. My name is Eugen, let's jump into it. To leave you in no doubt that the Griffons are not kidding about what a beast of an amplifier they are building, they ironically name it Diablo. The Diablo 120 to be exact. The company has only two integrated amplifiers. The Diablo 300, the price of which starts at almost $18,000 and our current budget beauty, whose price starts at $12,000. Of course, one would have to be indignant. What? A budget integrated amp for $12,000? You're all crazy in your audiophile universe. However, despite the high price, I have to say that this is really a great step and a gift for all those who want to have a Griffon amplifier in their home. And here's why. Griffon says they could never make a separate preamp and power amplifier that offered the same level of quality for the same money as a good integrated amp. And partly because of its integrated design, Diablo is so good. Also, Griffon tests every part of their devices. This means they have a history of tests for every piece of hardware they've made, as well as for every module, circuit board and everything in between. That's crazy. As for the Griffon production, all this is created exclusively in Denmark. However, Griffon outsources some of the work to manufacturers of high-precision military and medical equipment. In this way, they get access to technologies and production methods which aren't available to ordinary civilian companies. Tricksters. As for our budget amp, I can't stop calling it budget. It sounds so sweet, like a budget Porsche. Like, you can already afford it, all you have to do is not buy 10 tons of millet and you have a Diablo in your house. What's so complicated about that? Ok, but the concept of it mostly remains the same as that of the other Griffon components. It is still the same uncompromisingly built thing with nearly SpaceX great specs. Even this intricately cut case alone radiates audiophile perfection. Look at it for yourself, so elegantly put together complex shapes few can. In the audiophile world, you are either a voiceless beauty impossible to use, or a sweet-voiced buggy freak, at best a boring average. Love them for who they are. Diablo doesn't have that problem, but it has another. It was created by the ten armed gods of design and engineering. So, if you look at it in front of your woman, she'll almost centrally slap you for your lustful stare. And she would be right, it's a damn beautiful device that men desire. There are rumors that some audiophiles rub their lips bloody on its sharp radiators. But seriously, it's a really amazingly made amp. Every little thing in it excuses quality. Every line, every facet, every screw. And all of it together just looks really gorgeous. This non-magnetic and non-resonant metal housing has a handy touchscreen acrylic panel. You can read everything and it's easy to control. This amp is smart, but it also wants to seem simple, so it doesn't cause you complexes. Everything is simple in its interface, but still not as simple as your iPhone. There is still more to polish here. Ok, I can't stop seeing difference to all this beauty. Let's see how it's built. Although, we still need to show its back panel. There are a lot of inputs here, spaced channel by channel. 
one balanced and four single-ended inputs, plus one tape output for the recording deck. I don't even doubt that this was done for Studer and Atari owners. And what a cool terminals for connecting the speakers, huh? And above it all is a place to put an optional deck or a phono stage. Unfortunately, you should choose one or the other. You can't put them together. Well, as you can see, this layout of the connectors tells us that the real dual mono is inside. There are two isolated from each other fully balanced mono class AB amplifiers. And the only thing that unites them is Holmgren's famous 1300V ampere custom toroidal transformer. Moreover, these amplifiers are made with two and four layer PCBs with ultra short signal paths, thick gold plated copper tracks and cabling minimized. Of course, there is the most stringent selection of audiophile grade parts like low capacitance transistors and non inductive diodes. Plus, they emphasize that special attention was paid to grounding as in their top of the line models. Each amplifier is powered by its own 60,000 microfarads capacitor bank. Anyway, this black monster has a 57 pounds weight, 120 watts output power at 8 ohms, 240 watts at 4 and 440 watts at 2 ohms, a dumping factor over 1000 and, get ready, now comes my favorite part. The frequency range, which extends from 0.1 Hz to 250,000 Hz. From 1 tenth of a Hz, my goodness! Who on earth needs 1 tenth of a Hz? I think that's where the demoralization can stop. So, here it is paired with interesting speakers, Franco Serblinsk Tema and Sonus Faber Olympica Nova 3. As a source we have the Ion S10 Mark II digital player. And in principle, with Sonus Faber speakers and Ion we got quite a harmonious system. So, I started with light stuff like Angus and Julia Stone, and on the Grizzly Bear track you can immediately lie down and drown in your own tears of happiness. Some forum warriors accuse Griffons for being unemotional, they say that they are cool of course, but not so musical. Have you all gone nuts? I almost turned into a child here, and you say it's too dry. Yes, it's an insanely precise sound that seems to focus on every minor detail, every sonic grid. But it's incredibly involving and very emotional. You don't have to be a particular expert to hear how lively the vocalists sound. The Griffons are flawless in their scene build and you're not just listening to some light song. You literally see Angus and Julia turning to each other, they're really having a dialogue in front of you. The amplifier doesn't show any special preferences in the sound or coloration. Everything is quite even and only consistently high detail clearly shows you its impressive possibilities. There is a lot of air in the sound and the whole spectrum here is saturated with overtones. But I wouldn't say that with all this sound detailing the amp is analytical. Rather, it's precise, very rhythmic, but it doesn't have that crazy following of everything that comes in. It does allow itself a certain amount of relaxation because it delivers recordings with imperfect quality quite comfortably, and it doesn't beat you up with flaws. It will be comfortable to live with such a sound. Here, for example, the vast atmospheric electronics of the Swedish duo Gitch envelops you with a thick, dense, like northern folk sound in which gentle voice is drawn. All this is covered by treble sparkling like frost, just a cosmic sound, very richly textured. Synthesized music doesn't always sound this cool, and the dynamics of Griffon is really amazing. It is very powerful and when it needs to explode quickly, the Black Monster does it just lightning fast, and you feel that it stays tense and plays with its muscles the whole time. The bluesy stuff from the Little Hurricane duo sounds really open and detailed. The vocals just spread all over the place. They are pretty impressive and in general everything here has large, clear images. But it's interesting that the guitars are fast, energetic, but slightly subtle. 
I like the way Tony Allen's album with Jeff Mills sounds. It's quite bright with nice heavy low frequencies. There are so many details that you don't know what is more pleasant. Rich bottoms or this amazing diamond treble. Great sound, everything is very large, three-dimensional, with impressive dynamic bursts. The dynamics here are such that the unprepared person can become neurotic. I love this. To feel all the evil of Diablo, I really wanted to listen to an album called Hell's Ten by American progressive metal band Periphery. Should have made some noise. Of course, not to call anyone. Here, by the way, at least shout out, the showroom has been in this building for so many years that only audio files are left among the neighbors. Some say that the dog of one of the families living above is able to distinguish between German and English pressings of the wall by ear and reacts to speaker cables that hide the dynamics in the mid highs. As far as rich heavy music is concerned, it's a pleasure to listen to progressive metal on Italian mods powered by the devil. Moreover, if on Olympica Nova it sounds like metalheads in caramel, but on Ktemas it's just super. A little strange of course, but nothing is lost, the bestial grin of the musicians yelling at you is in place. Moreover, I noticed an interesting point. It seems that Diablo generally gravitates towards all this. As a saturated moment in music, it is necessarily served juicy. It seems to me that where it should be difficult for others, this amplifier, on the contrary, becomes impressive. There is some kind of enthusiasm in it, and this of course captivates me. On the whole, it couldn't have been otherwise. It seems to me to be a natural result when things are made with such attention to every detail. This attitude to the product Griffin demonstrates very clearly. There are no unimportant on secondary things here, be it design, ergonomics or sound quality. Yes, something tells me that not everyone can afford it, but that doesn't negate all of its virtues. Besides, I'm very much impressed by the fact that the dance managed to make very emotional things that can speak directly to your heart. So, I say the amplifier is simply magnificent, albeit very expensive. A dream.